Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the My Council Services uh, webinar on uh, licensing services this morning. Uh, and thank you for, for joining us in what is the most unusual of times for everybody across the nation and pretty much across the globe, I think. Um, we're very aware and conscious that this is unprecedented times that we're in. Um, and we're appreciative of you taking a little bit of time out from now, what I know will be very busy times for local authorities on the front line of services deliveries to take a look at something that perhaps is for consideration a little in the future um, once we're through the immediate public health crisis. So um, our thanks from all of us for taking a bit of time out this morning. In terms of um, the setup for today, there's two of us that are facilitating the session. You're going to hear, I'm afraid to have to say, to tell you that you're going to hear from me mainly. My name's Bernie Simmons. I'm the main facilitator in terms of um, running you through the content for this morning. But I'm also ably assisted by my colleague, Rachel Clinton, um, I'll talk a bit more about Rachel's role in a minute when we go through some some uh, housekeeping rules for how we run these sorts of sessions. Um, we'll be running for about probably about 50 to 60 minutes, something like that. We may get done a little a little sooner, depending on depending on how quickly we get through things. Um, but it will be we'll have you on your way certainly within the hour at the very latest, so you'll be able to get on with um, other important duties for the remainder of this Thursday. Uh, but we are going to focus on how technology can be applied to help drive efficiency and improve process and improve customer experiences through licensing services. More about that in a moment. Um, in terms of frequently asked questions for this session, some of you may not have um, attended webinars before, although I'm guessing with the new constraints on our ability to meet face-to-face -face in the current times, um, you're probably doing increasing amounts of communication over the phone, over video conference, and so on and so forth. And I have a feeling that these sorts of formats um, whilst already familiar to many of us, will become increasingly familiar to more of us. But in terms of how we run these sessions, we are recording this session, um, and the reason for that is so that we can share a copy of it um, after the event with all of those who attended, but importantly, we'll be able to share a copy with all of those who haven't attended, and in indeed, with the links that we provide you to the recorded content, if you want to share that with your colleagues, uh, once we finish the event this morning, um, you can do that. So if folks haven't been able to make it, either your colleagues or um, people from other organizations, uh, they haven't missed out completely. They can see the recorded live event um, at a time of their choosing that's convenient to them. So we're recording the session. You will also get a copy of the slides um, with all the associated reference materials. If you like what you see this morning and you want to get into a bit more detail and you want to run this sort of event as a closed event for your organization, so perhaps you're attending on behalf of your department today, um, or on behalf of a colleague, and you see, you think you'd like them to see it as a as a live event and a more as a, a live interactive event, we can do that. We can run a webinar for you, um, and in more usual times, we we can also arrange face to face visits. We uh, we do a lot of that in our line of work, so we can do reruns just for your organisation. Um, in terms of asking questions, we're conscious that I'm guessing most of you will, will be from your home offices today, given the current situation, um, as am I actually. Um, but you can still ask questions. We do we do mute everybody's line um, so that you don't get background noise. Normally, that's the, the hubbub of an open office. Um, in the current situation, that might be a dog barking, or perhaps you might have your kids at home, um, or, or general household background noise if you're working from home. So we mute everybody's line because of that. But we don't want that to stop you asking questions. And this is really where my colleague Rachel comes, um, comes to the fore. Uh, Rachel will be managing and governing the chat facility on the GoToWebinar console. Um, so if you have questions, use the chat facility on the GoToWebinar console to type your question to Rachel, or you can type it to the entire group if you wish, and Rachel will do her best to deal with those as they come in. Sometimes the questions are of a nature that are more involved and more complicated, uh, and they may, it may actually be better to park a question and we'll deal with it with a follow-up call or a follow-up email. But either way, we'll let you know. So Rachel will either answer your question as we go through this morning, um, or we'll deal with it as, a, as an offline separate conversation over email or indeed over the telephone. So lines are muted, please use the chat facility. So there's the, the basic housekeeping rules. In terms of the agenda, fairly structured over the next 50 minutes or so, we'll give you a little bit of background to the current challenges in local government. Um, perhaps not the most immediate challenges given my earlier comments and the situation we all find ourselves in, in terms of public health emergency around um, uh, COVID-19 and coronavirus, but certainly the kind of undercurrent of uh, challenges for local authorities. We'll provide a little bit of introduction and background to my council services. I'll talk briefly about some of the other local authorities using the platform, and we'll give over the majority of our time, certainly about 30 minutes of our time together, 
uh, will be dedicated to showing you some of the technology in action. And that's all the way from beginning to end, really, from a customer or a potential license app, um, applicant, a, a licensee applying for a process, all the way through to managing that and potentially conducting an inspection and those sorts of things. So we'll try and give you, in microcosm, an example of what a process would look like. Uh, and we're going to pick on the um, HMO, Housing and Multiple, House and Multiple Occupancy example this morning, but we'll also re re reference other examples in the licensing realm. Um, so that's the demonstration, and I've already talked about how to ask your questions. And please don't feel that you can't ask questions. If you've got something you want clarity on or you want to follow up on something, do use the chat facility. So that's the agenda for the remaining 50 minutes or so. Contemporary challenges for public service delivery. Well, th these haven't changed probably in the best part of a decade. Um, and we could probably add to this list now, as I said, in, in terms of the current climate. Um, but shrinking budgets, there's less cash around alongside that, um, you know, the, the constraint on cash um, and investment. There's reducing resources. And on the flip side of that, certainly over the last five to ten years, there's been a, a significant shift in customer expectations in that people generally, um, folks that use council services, which in one way or another is uh, everybody, um, everybody of, across the country uses their, customer, their council services in one way or another, some more than others. But increasingly, we have fairly high expectations of the services we expect to receive. So we expect immediate responses. We expect expectations of quality and choice in terms of the way that we want to interact. And increasingly, those requests for the way that we want to interact are a preference towards the digital um, and the online. So they're, they're important. And I know lots of authorities are already doing that. And we're working with lots of UK local authorities that we are enabling to deliver that to their customers. Alongside that, you've got lots of new and unmediated and arguably unstructured channels um, for customers getting in contact with you. Um, customers will not be shy, as you will know, of using social media and these sorts of less structured channels. So it's important that you do have um, a presence across those multiple digital channels to help provide customers with the services that they need. So no shortage of challenges, you know, current, current context notwithstanding. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the challenges and opportunities specifically for licensing services. So I've mentioned houses of multiple occupancy, but think about temporary event notices, personal licenses, taxi licensing. There's a whole range of different licensing services that local authorities are mandated to run. Um, and they are, when you start to get into them, relatively complex in nature. Um, and in fact, it's fair to say that there's a, a great deal of fairly complex processes that local authorities run. Um, outside of, within and outside of licensing services, but specifically for licensing services, they are relatively complex because um, they include, or many of them include multiple steps and multiple facets to them. So there's typically for a licensing process, some form of application process. And those application forms and processes can be fairly lengthy because of the level of detail of information that you're required and that you need to capture in order to facilitate that license properly and to ensure that things are being done in compliance with the appropriate legislation. So there's an application process. Quite often, there'll be some form of inspection or interaction process with the customer or with the customer's asset, be that a property, be that a vehicle, whatever it happens to be. So inspection is another common facet of licensing services. And payment is another one. I'll come on to that again in a moment. So the ability to collect payment and track payment efficiently is important. The other thing that's, um, that's a common theme of lots of, of um, li certainly licensing services and, and council services in general is that you're operating within a fairly well-defined and mature uh, legislative backdrop. So there's lots of legislation that, um, that governs the provision, management, and maintenance of licenses that allow um, residents of your constituency area, of your council area, to do certain things, run assets in a certain way for a certain purpose. And then alongside that, there's a range of licenses that are annual on basis or run over a certain amount of time and maybe need, maybe need to be renewed. So licensing services has a particular set of complications and complexities that need to be managed effectively. Um, and that certainly makes them a challenge in some regard, but it also, um, on the flip side, provides something of an opportunity because all of those things, application, inspection, payment, legislative backdrop and structure to the way a process is managed, um, the ability to, to collect and govern renewals are all things that really are well suited to being manifest as a digital service. So they lend themselves well to digitization. Certainly from our own, from our own conversations with our own customers and prospective customers, um, many licensing service areas are ripe for review and improvement. That's not to say they're being done badly, um, but there's lots of areas where 
they haven't necessarily yet moved to a fully digital end-to-end -end integrated process. So there's lots of opportunity for efficiency gains and also improvements in the way customers can interface with those services. The other thing in the context of you know, the operating environment for local authorities being somewhat cash constrained and on the sharp end of service delivery and what has been a prevailing um, environment of austerity around finance, finances, um, is they are an opportunity to generate sustainable genuine revenue for the council. So they're actually an inbound revenue stream. Um, and they also, when governed well and well managed, as well as generating revenue, you know, they're an important part of the, of the array of services that councils provide to make sure that things in your council area, be that district borough, borough unitary area, or whatever it happens to be, as far as licensed operations and licensed assets go, it's important that these thing, things are well main, maintained and well governed and well managed because that's about public safety. It's about making sure that you've got a safe, oper safe operating environment, safe housing, all these sorts of things. So it's an opportunity to generate sustainable revenue for the council. So lots of challenges, yes, and some complexity, yes, but also on the flip side of that, plenty of opportunities. So in terms of a, bit, a little bit of background about some of those challenges for local government, there's tended to be, um, historically certainly, um, a, a propensity for local authorities within their individual service areas to be, I say, rather siloed. And I don't mean that pejoratively or critically in any sense, but if you're running, if you're responsible, you and your team are responsible um, for running a range of services, you know, be that licensing or waste or whatever it happens to be, there is a natural tendency to focus in on the job that you're given to do and the piece that you're responsible for naturally. And when you add into that complexity of service type that we've just discussed, that's particularly pertinent for licensing services, it's a natural tendency to focus in on your area and your area only, and not necessarily to look at the kind of broader links between your area and other service areas across the council. So, and that's okay in terms of day-to-day -day tactical operation, but when you start to think about transformation as a program across your entire authority, and it's fair to say that local authorities are complex organizations running a, a wider range of fairly complex services for their customers who often depend on those services, it's important once in a while for at least certain individuals in the organization to be able to look, pop their head up and look across the piece. Um, and the danger of or the downside of focusing in on your in individual service area is you end up duplicating in terms of process, in terms of IT system, in terms of administration resources and administration um, processes. And when you're focusing in on your area and your area only, there's a tendency for those things to diversify in their own particular way. And you end up with what potentially can be a bit of a mishmash of different um, process types, different IT systems supporting them. So it's important that in your transformation efforts across the organization that you try and bring communality um, to the things that you're doing and the technologies that you're using and the processes that you're making available for customers to use, particularly if you're asking customers to use those in a self-service context. So, um, how do we address that? Well, if you think about the, the, the contemporary local authority structure, uh, and this is heavily simplified in the schematic that I've just brought up on screen, you've got several layers to the organization. At the top um, of, the, of the schematic I've just brought up on screen here, you've got you know, what we would typically refer to as customer services, or at least an enterprise-wide, an organization-wide administrative support resource. It's that first point of human contact some of the times, but increasingly digital point of contact that your customers are interfacing with. And that increasingly sits in front of all of the service specific functions that we talked about a moment ago. So licensing services, waste, social care, you know, leisure services, library services, you name it. Um, those service areas sit behind that first line of customer contact, be that digital or be that person to person in the, in the shape of customer services. Sitting alongside that, and, and facilitating lots of this, you've got your IT teams um, with, who are managing data and governing data and governing the systems that you're using and the way that those systems are architected. So if that's a simplified modern structure for a local um, authority in, in the 21st century, how does our technology stack, the technology stack that we provide, a, a, pla a digital platform called My Council Services, how does it map to that organizational structure? Well, the system that we provide is modular in nature, and I'll just talk you through it very briefly as we head towards showing you some of it in, in, in real life, as it were, some of the, the products actually working. At the top of that digital technology stack 
is a customer self-service layer. So that's the ability for a customer to interface with the council, with their council, through any device or means or contact channel of their choice, be that digital or be that over the phone or be it face-to-face -face indeed. Um, that, that will persist to be a, a feature of service delivery, I expect, for some time to come yet. But it's the ability to allow customers to do things for themselves increasingly through a digital interface. Sitting directly behind that are the kind of the, the human, if you like, the professional discretion-based services and interactions that your customer services staff and potentially service area staff are delivering. Tools like customer relationship management interfaces and case management interfaces in the shape of service desk that we provide as part of the My Council Services platform. Um, I'm not sure I've mentioned it already, but I should say that as an organization, Abavus only works with UK local authorities. We've built our entire business um, in that sector. So we've been, and we've been doing that um, for in excess of a decade now, and we've built up a, um, a significant and critical mass of UK local authority customers. So we've specialized in this market. And that has allowed us to build out the, the, I suppose the third component of the My Council Services digital platform, which is what we refer to as our line of business systems and modules. And they are more kind of service area specific or function specific capabilities that allow you to build out a range of different service types that can be self-service at the start point with a customer and can be automated as much as appropriate all the way through to resolution. I'll, I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, from an IT perspective, all of this is relevant to IT as it is relevant to the business area, uh, but also we realize that we are never going to be the only um, IT system in your organization. Local authorities have complex and multifaceted IT infrastructure and lots of different systems to play, albeit you know, trying to consolidate those systems and simplify some of that um, increasingly in the current times. Um, but the ability then to integrate and automate is important. So integration is really about playing nicely with other IT systems. So that's exchanging data securely, making sure that data is kept up to date, up to date data is federated across the organization. All of those capabilities sit within the My Council Services stack. And then off at the tail end, or at least closing the loop of the service delivery cycle, is what we refer to as mobile worker. So an example there may be if someone uses a laptop or a, a tablet device to submit an application for a house, for a license for an HMO, a house of multiple occupancy, now how can you get that through the organization from point of digital application as quickly as possible, get it verified, get it checked, get it qualified? Does it require an inspection of the premises? Perhaps it does. Well, if it does, how do you get that inspection out onto the device of an appropriate officer that can go out and complete that inspection on behalf of the council and award the, the license to the HMO in a context that we'll share in a moment, or example that we'll share in a moment. So it's that idea of being able to automate as much as possible and compress the amount of elapsed time it takes to get the job done, thus driving efficiency, thus improving the customer experience. It's also important to remember um, that you've got a customer, be that a licensee, an applicant in the middle of all of these things in the, in the licensing example typically, and it's probably quite important to keep that customer up to date in terms of what's happening with their application or with their particular license process. So the ability to automate through rules um, and to use conditional logic and a rules-based system to automate steps through the process and then to use automated messaging in the form of emails, SMS, potentially automated phone calls, to keep a customer up to date in terms of where they're at with their licensing process. And of course, part of this kind of expectation management piece with customers and improving the customer experience is about effective communication. So in summary to that slide, the My Council Services platform is modular in nature, um, and it allows you to kind of pick and choose the building blocks that you want to use to build a solution that reflects the requirements either of your organization at large or your particular service area. So you can invest and build a solution that matches your specific requirements. So a little bit on, on, on how My Council Services matches and maps to the modern um, and contemporary local authority organization structure. If I just explode some of those out for a moment, if we look at the top level, the self-service piece, um, we deliver and provide to our customers a fully-fledged e-form designer. That's both for customer-facing forms and internal forms. I'll talk more about that as we go through a, a demonstration process in a, in, in a few moments. Um, Alongside the uh, the e-form e piece, the browser-based e-forms, we offer a suite of native mobile applications and a whole range of other capabilities that sit alongside that self-service piece. You can provide e-forms as individual forms or indeed as part of a, a comprehensive My Account interface, which I'll show you in a few moments. 
Um, you can access data in third party and separate systems using single sign-on capabilities and integration capabilities. You can have multiple ways of verifying customers to ensure that they are who they say they are and you're confident that you can safely and securely share information with them. So there's lots of interlinking capabilities here um, that can allow you to stitch together a comprehensive customer self-service interface. So that's the, the top of the stack, if you will. If we then drop down into a little bit more detail, I mentioned that we only, only focus on UK local authorities, and that's how we've built our business over the last decade plus. Um, and that has allowed us to build out specific sets of functionality that help local authorities solve particular types of challenges. So, for example, we offer um, a contracts, license, and permit management capability. And that's appropriate to licensing services. It's also appropriate to things like accessible transport for blue badge permits and so on and so forth. We offer a dedicated um, waste management capability. So that's everything from you know, reporting a misbin using a dedicated e-form with intelligent waste data behind it through to deploying that information in cab to um, workers who are on the waste collection crew. Uh, we have a scheduling bookings and appointments capability that allows you to organize and arrange appointments based on a particular diary and availability of assets and people and so on and so forth. So you can stitch these things together um, to create appropriate solutions that address the specific concerns either of the entire organization or of specific service areas within your organization. Overlaid on top of all of that is a communications capability. So I mentioned the ability to automate communication back to the customer. That's where the communications module plays in. So there's a range of different line of business modules, as we refer to them, that help local authorities solve specific types of problems. Bookings problems, contract challenges, you know, waste management, integration and payment collection. It's a common feature, and we'll show you some examples of that as we move through um, the demonstration piece in the next few minutes. And then the final piece of the stack is our mobile worker suite. And I mentioned the mobile worker suite a moment ago, and I'll just reiterate the point that I made. That's to say that when someone makes an application, for example, for an HMO license, if that process requires an on-site inspection, an inspection of the premises to make sure it's safe, secure, and appropriate for issue of said license, how do you get that data out onto the device of an appropriately qualified council officer to go out as a mobile worker and conduct that experiment and con conduct that inspection, sorry, um, and make sure that the entire process is digitized as much as possible and as appropriate as, as possible end to end. So that's where the mobile worker piece comes in. So that's a quick kind of fly through some of the detail of the modules and componentry that make up the broader platform. Um, I've just popped up on screen 25 recent examples of my council services implementations. I'm not going to read all of these back to you, um, but they're all existing, current, active customers of my council services. The majority of those will have some presence in terms of forms and processes um, that relate to licensing services in some way. Many of them are using the platform right across the board, um, you know, end-to-end -end waste management solutions, um, environmental services, you name it, we're generally involved in uh, the full range of areas of operation that a local authority is engaged with. So. Um, I'll, as I said earlier, these slides will be shared with you, so there's no need to scribble those names down. We'll be sending a couple of these slides to you. So at that point, 20-odd um, minutes in, I'm just going to step out of the slides, um, and I hope what I've shared so far has started to breathe some life into what it is we offer for those of you that are um, unfamiliar with my council services. And what we'll try to do now is to breathe some further life into it via a, a live demonstration. So we'll discard all my on-screen scribbles. I'm going to jump across to... Um, a browser interface. Just refresh that screen because I expect it to uh, timed out while I've been talking. So what I'm going to do first off, folks, we're going to start the process of the demonstration as though we were a customer. So a local resident of your local authority area with a requirement around a licensing application. So I'm going to log in first to, a, to an account portal. So I'll, I'll do that um, just now. And what that will do is log me into an environment, had I um, typed the details and credentials in correctly. Let's try that again.
There we go. Third time lucky. So I've logged into an environment that is a structured My Account portal that a council might use. When we deliver this for our local authority customers, this is an integrated part of the .gov.uk website that the council hosts its web property on. Um, it's fully branded, so you're not going off to separate URLs. You're in the, the you know, the whatever, the council.gov.uk web domain, and it's fully color washed, picking up a style sheet of the local authority um, website in question. It's got the logos on, so on and so forth. This is a vanilla example um, of, a, of a demo environment for a, for a customer portal. It's also important to say, now, we're going to go and use some, some licensing examples in a moment, but you don't have to have everything embedded in a portal. When we deploy the customer self-service side for our clients, um, you can either have individual forms that do not require login or registration. They can just pitch up and use them. Um, you can have individual forms that require registration to access that specific form, and or you can deliver this as a, as a complete portal solution, which is the, the, the way that we're choosing to show this to you this morning. So on that note, I'll just explain the layout of the screen and what you're seeing on screen. And I'll start on the left-hand side over here. You can follow my cursor. So you've got everything within the portal is fully configurable. So one of the key principles when we're developing and, de and deploying my council services is to make as much of it as possible um, configurable by the customer, so by the council. So you have control over the way it looks, what's included, what's not included. On the left-hand side by you've got a configurable drop-down menu behind which you can embed forms, content, access to certain transactional processes, whatever it happens to be. In the center of the screen, you've got what we call widgets or hotspots. Again, they're configurable. They can link into individual forms or link into existing web content elsewhere on the site or link out to um, third-party web content, whatever it happens to be. So there's all sorts of things that you can plug in behind those widgets. and You can have as many of those as you like. And then on the right-hand side, you've got a range of information that is specific to the customer. So a customer having raised a service request or made an application can go and see that. They've got drafts that they've started but not completed. They can go and revisit those. Um, and you can configure these in any way that you like. If there's messages that have been sent to the customer, they can click through and see those. So that if they're using the portal and they've taken the time to register, they make themselves eligible for the privilege of being kept up to date in terms of communication around service requests, but also being able to, to review information of previously submitted service requests. If I take your attention back to the left-hand sidebar, we've got a whole bunch of different forms available to us. If I click on Report It, for example, there's a whole bunch of Report It forms through dog fouling, graffiti, misbin, whatever it might be. But I'm going to draw your attention down to the Apply For It forms um, where we've got some specific licensing examples. So we've clustered these as a, as a group of Apply For It forms. We've got an HMO license form, which we'll run through in a minute. Um, there's a temporary, uh, temporary event notice, an application for a personal license. So the range of kind of high volume, commonly used licensing services that will be familiar to you and your organization as the UK local authority. The other thing I'll point out, I'll just jump back to um, the home screen and refresh that. We also offer the, the portal as a fully indexed kind of search entity in its own right. So if I type, type into this, if I know it's an HMO, a house of multiple occupancy that I'm looking for and I want to make an application for that, because I'm familiar with the process, then I can just type in HMO or another keyword or house in multiple occupation or whatever it happens to be. I can use various search terms. All of the all of the forms are, are tagged in that regard. In that regard, for search, um, and I can just it will just return a form and it will then drop me into that form. So we're into our first form proper at this stage. Uh, the first thing to point out is you get a breadcrumb trail across the top um, in terms of how many steps the customer has to go through. This is actually a fairly complex form. And I've, I've chosen this deliberately um, as an example to show you that you can translate fairly involved forms quite quickly into a digital format if you haven't already attempted that or thought about that. So the first opening piece is some guidance and links to other web content that's pertinent to help the customer educate themselves into the purposes of an HMO application. I'm going to whistle through this fairly quickly because it is quite a lengthy form. Um, and actually, a couple of things that I'll point out as we go through. So the first thing that we ask for, as much as possible, I should also mention that we, we adhere to where, is, where it's sensible to do so, all of the government digital services guidelines. So single, single question per page, those sorts of things. You can break those rules if you wish. You, you can design a form in any way that you like. Um, but we certainly um, support and espouse those approaches. So the first thing that we're asking for is... Um, an address of the premises to be licensed. So I've typed in a postcode 
I'm going to put a, a street number in here as well. So we zero in on a particular address. And what you'll notice is it's matching back to the full address, da address based database. So our platform carries with it, and we deliver this as part of the implementation, um, a full NLPG, National Land and Property Gazetteer, as part of the My Council Services platform and application. That makes the matching and parsing of data back to your own LLPG, Local Land and Property Gazetteer, which as you will all know is a subsection of NLPG, um, much more straightforward. So L NLPG is a feature of our platform. So we select the appropriate address, click on Next, and then we start to move through the form proper. Um, I'm going to do a few questions early on, and then I'm going to skip through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you'll notice that in, on individual on individual questions, this one being an example, um, we've got a red asterisk against that, which means that's a mandatory form. So you can create as many mandatory fields as you wish on a form. That means your customer cannot progress past them without completing them, as you would expect. For the purposes of artistic license and saving your sanity and saving a bit of time, um, I've also removed a lot of the of the um of the uh, mandatory fields on this particular form just to save time so i can skip through them but we've got a whole bunch of questions on here so we can fill in and different types of data input so you know we're putting in a date a date of birth here for the applicant so we'll select the date randomly and we can put company details in we can add additional text so on and so forth it's also pre-populating some of this with the details of the registered customer registered customer under whose profile I'm running this demonstration. So this is a, a made up character called Gary Wilcox, resident of Redbridge Borough Council, applying for an HMO license. So we step through this, and this goes into all of the detail that you would expect. And this is quite a complex um, and detailed and relatively lengthy form. Um, I'm gonna, again, use my artistic license and just skip through lots of these questions, but you've got drop down options here. All of the forms are designed within My Council Services and can be deployed both the browser and to native mobile applications so that you can provide customers with a choice of ways that they get through that. Um, we'll say there's no license on, there's no mortgage on this property. Um, I'll say yes. I'll skip those details just to save a bit of time. This goes into really a great deal of, uh, of information capture and information gathering as part of the HMO process, as you would expect. Uh, we'll say no, there's no leasehold. I'm not going to narrate the whole form through. I'm just going to try and step through this um, as quickly as I can so that we can get on to the license management piece. So again, these would normally be mandatory questions. I've removed some of the mandatory nature of these. Uh, but I do want to create a, an application proper here in order that we can go and manage that in the back office and start, show some of the downstream automation that's possible. I will answer a few questions just so we popped out a few bits and pieces out. So there's guidance and scripting information to assist the customer as they move through completion of the form. So they're having their hand held, if you will, um, all the way. So we'll put um, a few details in here, just to give it a little bit of population. I won't go through the whole process. Capturing details on property maintenance at this stage, we'll say yes, there is. Um, or in fact, we'll say no, so we don't fill any details. Um, So this is allowing the customer to complete this in its entirety to submit all of the appropriate data. As I said, if I didn't need to stop at any particular point and go and reference other materials or go back and check some details or go and find documentation that's relevant to their application, they can click save and that will be saved as a draft that they can then revisit um, at a later date. So final piece is um, the HMO application will document documentation and declaration. So we're going to upload a file. So that's a good example to show. So if I click on Add Files, um, I've got an example of a safety certificate here, which we'll upload. You can control the number, size, volume of, total cumulative size of any uploads that are available. You can control the file extensions that you're allowed to be uploaded. All of the things that you would normally expect in terms of maintaining information security around third-party content. 
So we'll just upload that content. And then the final step for us will be to confirm that we understand that what we're submitting is a, a legal application and that we're, we're not uh, telling, telling any fibs. And then we're into the final step of it. So we've deliberately designed this process for the, for the, um, for the demonstration to, to be complete in terms of fee, fee collection as well. So we've actually created products using the products module within My Council Services um, to, to identify the components of an HMO license that a customer might want to select. You don't have to do it this way. You might choose to actually create a break in the process at this point. You might say, well, we'll collect all the information, we'll review that internally, and then we'll send an automated mail back to the customer with a link back to payment once we're happy that all of the requirements have been satisfied. We've compressed that a little bit just so we can show it to you all in one go this morning. Um, but what it's actually doing then is, um, is calculating the cost of that. So we can add multiple products if we needed to do that. But you're using the products module here to enable the full process to be completed and to collect payment. So if we then click on next. Wrong product. And then we're into the payment page. So this is the first point of integration of that kind of e-form and self-service process. So we're actually integrating into the test payment gateway, gateway for Bar Barclay cards. As part of the implementations of My Council Services, we do an awful lot of payment integration to allow online payment collection. We are not, we are not the payment gateway provider. We're integrating in this case into Barclay Card, but we've done integrations into Capita, into um, Civica payment, e-payment and web store, Iridium, WorldPay, uh, GoCardless, you name it, we've done it. Um, put in the cardholder details. So I've got a test card that I can use here. Put in an appropriate expiry date. And confirm my payment. So we've done a secure handshake with the payment gateway based on the calculated fee. It's passed that calculated fee over to um, the payment gateway securely in encrypted format. The payment gateway will then do its work as a, as a payment card industry compliant piece of technology. It will hand the result of that transaction, which I'm glad to say is the payment has been accepted. So in this case, Gary has started his application. He's completed all of the necessary questions, provided all of the appropriate documentation. That's been deemed acceptable, and we've chosen to collect payment at this point um, based on a particular product configuration that he's gone for, a license configuration that he's gone for, that he's selected. Um, and then we can go ahead and allow Gary, having collected the payment, to review that and submit that completed paid application to the council. Having done that, um, without having to speak to anybody, get on the phone to anybody. Of course, the other thing that could have happened within that process, if Gary got himself in a, in a confused state at any point in terms of being able to complete that process, he could have saved that form, he could have got on the phone, spoken to someone, he could have been, had a mediated experience, an assistive experience through completing that form. So the forms in the My Council Services platform face both ways. So a customer service agent would be able to guide Gary through that as, a, as an assisted process if that was required. So it fits all of the different interaction uh, requirements. So if Gary's happy with that, he's made his payment, he's submitted all his details and his documentation, he knows where the property is, all he needs to do then is click on Submit. And that then will be bundled up as a package of data and will then go into the, the licensing case management back office which is where we'll go next, folks. So what we've done so far is everything relating to the customer applying for a process. In this case, we've gone through an HF very, very speedily, um, gone through uh, a house of multiple occupancy process. We could have used that for any of the other processes that we've got available, temporary event notice, um, personal license, whatever it happens to be. But we've, we've done that in a self-service context. So what I'm gonna do next, we're gonna have a, a slight step change in terms of where we are in the demonstration. Everything we've done so far has been under the profile of Gary, a, a fictitious resident and customer of Redbridge Borough Council. One last thing on the, on the customer portal before I navigate away is just to click on this service request link at the top right hand corner here. Um, and what you can see is that Gary as a registered customer can see his application immediately. So he can see that he's submitted HM application form with a service request number of 181014 on the 20, 26th of the 3rd, 2020 at 12.06. So Gary's got access and visibility and contact with that application the whole time. So 
Next phase, let's jump across to a different clean browser interface. And we're going to log in this time as though I'm a, a, a council officer. So I'm no longer in the role of customer. I'm now in the role of council officer. So I'm going to use a different set of login credentials. I'm logging un, in under my own profile. And that will then take us into the back office for the demo instance that we've been using so far. So we're now viewing everything as though we're a member of the council, not a member of the public. I'm probably overplaying that point, but I want to make it clear in terms of where we're at in the process. We've switched roles from customer to council officer. And what we're looking at is the service desk interface of my council services. And I'm going to switch the view of that so we're only looking at licensing applications. Um, within a given date over the last month. And if I refresh that screen, then what you'll see is we're getting a very similar view of those current applications that relate to licensing services as that which an individual customer would get of their own transactions that relate to licensing services. So at the top of that list is Gary's most recent HMO application form, um, application or service request number 181014, today at 1206, sitting at status open, customer Gary Wilcox. Something quite important has already happened, which is a piece of automated workflow has already kicked in that says, well, when we get an HMO application in, we're going to automatically assign it to the appropriate licensing officer or officers or licensing team. Um, and in this case, that's assigned it back to me. So that's already happened. So we're looking at Service Desk, which is a first line case management capability, which gives us a transaction based view of the world. So we can see all of the licensing based applications. That's a good point to mention um, an aspect of the My Council Services that is, of the My Council Services platform that is related to information governance and information security. Every user on the platform has a profile, so a council officer will have a profile that limits a the range of functionality on the platform that they can see, but as importantly as that, it governs the range of data that they can see. So if I'm a licensing officer, I may only see the functionality and the data that's relating to the licensing services that I'm responsible for. So I'm only seeing the data that I need to see and that I'm supposed to see. So that's what we call our role-based access control module that is an integral part of the overall platform. So subject to my privileges, I can click on that individual application that Gary has just created, and I can go in, and I can start to review the content of that if it's my job to do so. So you see that when I log into that, I've got the details around Gary, who's the customer submitting it, and I've got all of the questions, many of which I didn't answer in the, in the, um, in the form completion process, available to me. So I can go and, and spool through that and read through that in quite a lot of detail. I can see the documentation that Gary's uploaded, for example, a fire safety certificate or any other certification that he might have created. I can see any other historical interactions. I can see the location of the property. And crucially, I can see some of the automated workflow starting to kick in. So I can see that we've, created, we've assigned an owner to this. So it's been assigned to me as a mobile worker, someone as the officer that's going to be responsible for it. And we've also created a task alongside it, which is the housing inspection task. So we're taking some quite kind of big leaps of assumption, but we're doing that to demonstrate the capability and demonstrate the point. And that's what we're going to go and try and show you next. And then we'll come back to the back office and take another look at things. So what I'm going to do first off, I've got at this point, to rely on a little bit of third party technology to try and share with you um, a screen on my mobile device on a um, actually on a, an Android tablet. So just bear with me a moment, folks, while I um, fire up a third party application that will allow me to reflect my device screen onto my main screen in the hope that you will be able to see it. So I'll allow that. If I drag this screen across into my main screen, there we go. So you are now seeing the, the, the screen of my Android device, um, which is a completely standard um, Android tablet in a ruggedized case. 
And what we're going to show you at this stage is, uh, is some of the processes that's associated with mobile working. So I'm going to tap on um, the native mobile application there called My, My Council Services. And that includes a whole bunch of screens that are accessible to the mobile worker. So they can, for example, use things like report it forms on their mobile device. But crucially, I want to draw your attention down to the mobile worker screen down here. Because if I tap on that, then that will allow me to see any service requests as a remote and mobile worker um, that have been assigned to me. So the reason that we've been developing the, the mobile worker capability around the native mobile application capability is that gives us one significant, a very significant advantage, which is to enable offline working. So if I'm in a in the stairwell of a flat, or if I'm in a field somewhere, or a part of the borough or district or wherever I happen to be that doesn't have internet connectivity, I can still view my downloaded um, tasks and service requests that I need to deal with. I need wireless or 3G or 4G connectivity in order to, to, to upload and sync back to the main database, but I can actually go through the entire process and all of that data is held locally and encrypted and securely on the device. So you've got with mobile working the full offline working capability. And what you'll notice while I was just kind of narrating in the background there, I, I swiped to refresh the screen, and because I am connected to a, a wireless network at this stage, it's been able to download the most recent HMO application form for Wonder 100 Grove Hill on the 26th of March 2020. You can see at the top of my service request list up here. If I tap on that, that will then take me into all of the detail of the application form that Gary filled out online for himself and paid for a few minutes ago. So all of the details that he shared as part of that form are now available to me on my device. And if I start to scroll through that, I can start to see that I've also got a task assigned to me. So if I tap into that, I can see the individual details of the task. And actually, as part of this, I can see all of Gary's contact details. If I need to phone Gary up to find out exactly where it is, if I'm meeting him there, I can do that. But I've also got what's called a task form, which has been attached to this particular task. So that allows me actually to go through and create a whole bunch of additional data in the form of an inspection. So if I tap on that task form, it takes me into a structured form set that allows me to go and complete um, a, uh, an inspection at the premises. So if I type in the postcode, for example, it can match back up to LLPG, and it will allow me to tether back to the particular premises that I'm inspecting. to be taking its time this morning. What you call Murphy's Law, I think. So I can go through that process and complete that form in any way that I see fit and make changes to the entire process whilst working remotely offline as a mobile worker. So having completed that process, I can then jump back to the back office capability of my council services, and that will allow me then to go and review any inspections that have been completed, any work that's been done out in the field, any updates that have been made. I can drop back into that detail and see exactly what's going on in terms of ongoing inspections, changes to that data, changes to that inspection process, if there's been a, rev a revocation of the license based on the details that Gary shared, so on and so forth. I've got all of that detail available to me around the tasks that have been completed. If I just drop back into Service Desk, what you'll also notice, yeah, didn't seem to like that very much. See if we can't refresh that. There we go, back into 
service rest, we'll go back to licensing. And drop back into the application that we were looking at, Gary's application. So all of this is completely online. I'm running everything through the browser. I've got all of the case management tools that I would require at my disposal, so I can add documents, notes, interactions, create new tasks, as well as automated tasks that we've already showed. I can view the entire history of, of that particular case, so we get a full audit trail of everything that's been done. So if there's, if there's ever a question asked around the process that you've gone through as an organization in terms of managing HMO applications or any other, other licensing applications, all of that is captured as an audit trail as part of the case management capability. I can update owners, change status, um, I can send documents, I can send emails, SMSs back to the applicant. So I've got a full range of case management capability available through Service Desk. The final piece that I wanted to share with you in terms of the kind of My Council Services capability as part of the session this morning, having stepped through application via a licensee, back office case management capability, some mobile working capability on the, on the mobile device. I just wanted to show you a few bits and pieces around reporting. So I'm going to jump back to service requests. I've already mentioned that I can get a tabular report of all of the current service requests that are either assigned to me that I've got the privilege to see. I can also view that as a map if I want to, so I can get a spatial representation, effectively a heat map of where in the borough all of our HMO applications are, so I can zoom into those and I can click through and get the individual detail around all of our licensing applications or just our HMO applications and whatever it happens to be. So I can have that as a tabular report, a spatial map-based report, um, and indeed, I can have that as a, a set of graphs and graphics that are available to me. So you've got integrated reporting as part of the overall case management suite within My Council Services. We also provide a whole range of dashboard capability. So we can go and look at by day, by week, by month, line charts of exactly what's going on and what the throughput is in terms of different service requests um, for different service areas and, it's, and if we want to specific forms. So we can drill right down over particular timelines to see what's going on. And if we want to get into more detailed um, analytics, I can jump down to the analytics tab at the bottom on the left-hand sidebar of the back office screens. Um, and I've got a whole range of pre-configured reports. So I could, for example, if I wanted to look at how my finance reconciliation was going for uh, my licensing services, I could fit on the, click on the finance reconciliation report, select the appropriate payment gateway, select licensing HMO applications, and just ask the system to run a report on all payments that have been made um, against those particular process types. So I've got access in real time to both throughput and activity data of service risks that are coming through and applications and licensing applications that are coming through and through. And I've also got the ability to do spatial reports and I've got the ability to drill right down into detailed granular level reports around payment or any other aspect of the licensing process. I'm conscious of time, folks. We're coming up to 25 past the hour, and I said I'd have you on your way by, by half past 12 within the hour. One final thing that I wanted to share with you was just to drop down um, to the administration screens. So the administration screens are an area where all of the, of the platform configuration can be done. This is not an area of the platform that every user in the council is going to use. It's going to be the people that are responsible for the creation and design of processes um, and the ability to change the way that things work and the way the processes are run and deployed. So for example, um, I've got the full e-form builder capability. So I can go and design a form from scratch, or if I wanted to, I could go into our form store and I could search for an appropriate form. So if I search for um, house, for example, see if anything matches that particular form. I can look for anything that's got the name house in it. So I've got an HMO form in here. I can go and retrieve that. There we go. So we've got a range of different HMO forms in here or any other form. So if you don't want to design a form from scratch, you can use our form store to go in and borrow with pride from your other My Council Services community users. There's no charge for that. We call it the form store, but it's not a commercial aspect. It's the ability to design and, and create assets within the platform that you can then share if you wish with other local authorities. And that Functionality is a good example of one of the key principles of our development process, which we call customer advisory. So we run a customer advisory board, and what that means is we use our customers as a sounding board 
for how we should develop the platform in future. And in fact, the form store, the ability to share forms was a direct piece of feedback from our customers some time ago now. And it's something that's proven to be very, very popular. We've got thousands of forms that you can pick up and use and deploy as you see fit. And a couple of other bits and pieces um, on here. If I, if I jump down, actually, if I search for um, plugin, I talked about the ability to configure and the ability to reuse. So we showed a point of integration around the HMO form where we paid for that, for that license application. That required an integration to the secure Bartley Card payment gateway for this example. I mentioned some of the others that we've done, Capita and Civica are amongst them. Uh, but once we've done that integration with your chosen payment gateway provider once, that then exists as a, as a plugin on the platform that you can use for every other form. So if your first foray into using My Council Services for licensing is that HMO form or a temporary event notice and you've got payment as part of that process, you can reuse that payment integration for any other licensing form or indeed any other form that requires payment across the entire array of forms that you're deploying. So the idea really in terms of um, the platform at its, at its highest level in terms of its key philosophies and principles is configurability and reusability. So the ability to configure yourself and own it yourself and, de and de design it in the way that you want with our support as appropriate. Uh, but crucially, the ability once you've created an asset or a function or a feature for that to be able to be reused, be that sharing with a, a neighboring authority or indeed reusing something like the payment gateway. So within the administration screens, screens are the full set of configuration capability that allows you to really take ownership of the platform. So that's a, a, a quick run through of some of the licensing capabilities and the end-to-end -end capabilities um, on the platform. I just want to finish off with a last few bits and pieces in terms of advice to get started. And again, I'll just reiterate and, uh, and I suppose acknowledge the current times that we're living through, um, unprecedented as they are with what's going on in the wider world. But as and when you come to think about digitizing your licensing services and perhaps more normal times of service delivery, which we hope will be resumed at some point in the next few weeks or months. Some advice to get started. My Council services can be implemented incrementally. Um, so we can help you build out that business case and help you spec out what that's going to look like. Um, and you can start with some tactical wins and plan for the mid to longer term strategic goals. We always recommend planning long term, but sometimes you want to deliver tactically in the shorter term to make sure you're not notching up successes. Um, my Council Service is open, so we play nicely with other IT systems. We've got an, um, uh, an open web services capability that allows you to integrate with and exchange data securely with other applications. There are technical aspects to that and it often requires project support to get those things done, but it's an open platform in principle. And the other thing we always acknowledge as part of these conversations or these sessions is that technology is really only part of the solution. Um, you need to think about process review and process design. You need to think about education of your staff if you're thinking about digitizing um, licensing services. So whilst technology is important, it's not, the, it's not a silver bullet. It needs to be implemented appropriately, and you need to think more broadly about the other implications that are associated with the fundamental changes you're going to make to the way that you're delivering your services. So there's some advice to get started. It just remains for me to say at 29 minutes past the hour, so we're just about on time, to say thank you very much for participating in what I know is a difficult time for lots of folks. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, please feel free to do so. We'd be very happy to speak to you at a time of your convenience. Thanks, folks, and I wish you a safe and secure remainder of your Thursday and beyond. Thanks. Bye now.